Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, thank you for your invitation to talk about it. The net is spread very, very wide. And, and I believe that in the drafting of law, what come, go into the mind of the uh, Communist Party is all the action taken over the past protest uh, movement. So the, oh, when they are so angry with the protest movement, so they can't every act and try to criminalize every act in the past and try to cover it this time in under the national security law so that it can be a revenge against the people of Hong Kong for what we have done in the past years. With the destruction of one country's two system and rule of law and it's in its place, rule of fear, Hong Kong have to learn to live and survive in a very, very suppressive environment. And still, we must retain the will to resist. And for us, we will continue our past activities and not deter by the new authoritarian law. We will yes. fight on for freedom and democracy. Thank you. We do know that the NPC Standing Committee has the power, the overriding power, to interpret vague clauses. But the law is silent as to whether the courts of Hong Kong also have the power to interpret the law. This is significant because the courts of Hong Kong will probably try to interpret this law to comply with the ICCPR so long as there are no direct conflicts. Where there is a direct conflict, then this law will prevail. That means that China will be in breach of its obligation under the Sino-British Declaration to ensure that the ICCPR continues to be in force in Hong Kong. What's happening in Hong Kong will soon spill over to the world. And that's why I believe the United States must hold China accountable for its continuous encroachment on Hong Kong autonomy and freedom. China should not be allowed to guard its international obligation while benefiting from Hong Kong's special economic status. We must act now to act tangible pressure on China, including the use of a range of instruments provided by the new Hong Kong Autonomy Act just passed it and to provide substantive assistance to Hong Kong protesters, such as favorable immigration and refugee policy, for it may soon be too late. Intimidation and heavy-handed governance, Beijing turns Hong Kong into just another Chinese city while trying to keep its outer shell. In doing so, it hopes to preserve the illusion that the city is still autonomous. The international community must not be confused Carrie Lam and her entire cabinet are puppets who have no power to make meaningful decisions. The high degree of autonomy once promised is just another blatant lie. It takes decades, if not longer, to build a city, but it takes just weeks to destroy it. This is what we have all seen lately. What now lies ahead of us is not just the personal safety of my friend Joshua or other leading oppositional figures like Martin Lee and Jimmy Lai, but the survival of Hong Kong as an idea. For fighting always for human rights all these years and working with the speaker on some...